Hey guys, Andrew with TheDirtyTank.com and today I'm going to show you how I culture Infrasoria to feed some of my fry. So I have a few tubs of Infrasoria going. Here's one of the tubs. I also have three tubs of Infrasoria there. And then if we come over here, I have two more little containers of Infrasoria. Um, all to help feed some of the baby fish that uh, maybe their stage of life where they're too small to eat baby brine. So let's take a close look. I may have to um, do it on a different camera for you to see. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get footage from my other camera. Oh, you can kind of see, see all those little white specks? Um, I'm gonna try to get my macro lens from another camera and get a close up and you can see all these little tiny things. They look like little bitty worms, like really short though, just kind of crawling and moving around. Um, that's Infosoria. Now, Infosoria is really just a generic term for any single cell organism that kind of lives in this environment. Um, so, I don't know the exact name of what's floating around in here, um, but just a catch all is Infosoria. So, I'm going to show you a quick way on how you can make Infosoria right now and it'll be ready in just a couple days. Um, maybe even same day, it'll be, it'll already have Infosoria in there, but you're going to want to wait a couple days for that culture to really build up and you have enough um, so that when you start fe feeding, um, you don't kind of diminish everything that's in there. Uh, it's really easy to do um, and there's a lot of benefits, especially for really, really tiny fry. Uh, to feed on the first few days of life. All right, so the first thing you're gonna want, you're gonna want some kind of jar or container that you are gonna, uh, I guess, culture your infusoria in. Now, normally the bigger the jar, the better, uh, but it doesn't have to be gigantic. It, make it the size that's appropriate for however many fish you have, right? If, if you're only gonna have um, one group of baby fish at a time that you're growing up, then you may want a smaller one. But if you have three, four, five different fry, all from different kinds of fishes, growing up all at the same time, then you may want a larger one and you're gonna want several of them. Now the reason why you want more than one jar is because it's very easy to crash um, these cultures. Um, and that's okay, right? I don't want that to kind of make you think, well, I shouldn't bother doing it if it's gonna crash because it's just so easy to make. Um, you can put three, four, five of these up, kind of like what I have, um, and you can rearrange through each of them um, as that cycle kind of happens. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. You get your container and you're gonna get some tank water. Just gonna dip it in like this. Ideally, you would wanna fill it up much higher than this. Um, actually, I'm gonna fill up a bit more. So you got a good jar of Infosoria. Um, now, I'm actually gonna dump this all in my other jars, but you would wanna keep this in this jar here and kinda culture it. So once you have your tank water, um, what you wanna do next, and, and let's talk about tank water for a second, because it doesn't have to be tank water, that's just the easiest to do. Um, it could be dechlorinated, it could be tap water that you left out for a few days and then you collect it in your jar um, and normally that's your best bet and the reason why is because if you just get straight tank water like I am then there could be other I guess little organisms in here that will outcompete your infusoria for food and your infusoria culture won't kind of take off but if you're collecting water from where there's active fish swimming around kind of eating all the little organisms in there anyways then there's a high likelihood that there's nothing in there that that's gonna outcompete your infusoria for food. But if you get your tank water from like a shrimp only tank, well, there's a higher likelihood that there's little organisms in there that's gonna outcompete your infusoria for food um, because in a shrimp only tank, there's nothing to eat those little organisms. Um, so I recommend get tank water from a tank with fish in there um, that kind of eat those little organisms already. And you'll have a pretty safe bet that this is gonna be a really good um, uh, start for your infusoria. Now, once you have your water in the jar that you're gonna culture your infusoria, now you're gonna want to get some infusoria and you already have that. If you have fish tanks, you already have infusoria. So how you do that, is you're gonna go in the back of your filter. One of your filters, doesn't matter each, which one, you're gonna grab some of the filter media, preferably the sponges. I'm gonna grab two of them. And you're gonna take that and bring that back to wherever your infusoria jar is. Now, once you have your used filter media and you have your jar that you're gonna culture your infusoria in, you're gonna take one of your sponges, you're gonna put it in the water and you're just gonna squeeze all that gunk in there really good it's gonna make it all nice and muddy and dark and full of gunk 
You're gonna take your other one, you're gonna do the same thing, and you just wanna squeeze it all in there. Because in here, this is where all your infusoria is gonna be. And at the same time, this is also housing a lot of beneficial bacteria. So it's gonna help make this water even safer for a longer time. Um, so now you can see it's just a black brown gunk, right? Um, but that's good, that's what you want. So now this is full of infusoria. Now not a ton because there aren't a ton of food sources for the infusoria. Now there's a few things you can feed your infusoria. Um, if you look online, most people recommend yeast. Well, I recommend, um, it's called spirulina powder, right? Um, they sell it as a supplement, right? And so you can get a pretty decent sized bag for, you know, like 15 bucks. Um, and this is just, it's green powder, right? Um, and this is what I feed to my, um, to my infusoria and this is how they've been thriving and, and living. Um, in my cultures, all the different ones, I only feed the spirulina powder. That's it. Um, so let me kind of show you how much. For a jar of this size, all I do is I open it up and I'm, I'm even using a fork. I'm not even using a spoon. I'm not using any kind of measuring device because you don't have to get it perfect, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but you want it for about this much, you know, I would probably use just a heaping fork spoon, uh, fork full or a spoonful would work, right? And I kind of put that in there. And then what I do is I take my turkey baster or whatever you want and you want to stir it up for a little bit. Gonna give it a nice good stir. Gonna suck some up, kinda clean off the sides, and it's gonna be really rich and dark green. Like really dark green. And now this is gonna go through, over the next couple days, it's gonna go through several different stages. Now what you'll see is that slowly you're gonna start seeing more of those little white specks that I showed you earlier. That's your infusoria. And what'll happen after a couple days, um, you will slowly start to see this green water turn like a lighter green. Uh, let me show you some of my cultures. So if I take you over here, look how light green this culture is compared to the other one. Now if you see it looking like this, let me pull it up. If you see it looking like this, that means it's time to feed your culture again, right? And that's an easy way on how you know, okay, it's time to feed my culture because they kind of ate everything already. Um, and now if you look over here, it's time to feed this culture. It's time to feed all these cultures. So I'm actually gonna take the culture that we just made and feed my other ones. But this is exactly how I fed it, right? Or how I started it to begin with. Then, it, So if you're just starting it for the first time, you're gonna take this jar and you're just gonna leave it wherever you wanna keep your infusoria culture and you're done, right? Um, and then I wouldn't start using it till a few days later until you really start to see those little specks everywhere. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and feed my infusoria just so you can kinda see. Now if you're feeding your infusoria once you already got set up, you can do the same thing. I would recommend filling some a glass up with tank water, putting a, a heaping fork full of the powder in here, stirring it all up, and then putting a little bit into each of your cultures to feed it. Um, so let me show you that process now. So I'm gonna put some in here. Oh yeah, probably put a little bit more. Same with the other guy. And at the same time that I'm feeding the culture, I'm also replacing the water volume. Because as you take from your culture, well, the water volume's gonna go down. Um, and that's a good thing. That's essentially like you're doing a water change each time. Um, and so I'm gonna show you how I feed from the infusoria culture and how I take from it um, to feed my fry. So I'm gonna show you that after I feed the infusoria itself. So there we go. Now you can see how dark green that is again. Um, and so there, the infusoria is gonna be really happy. They have a, a replenished food supply. Um, so it's gonna be really good. Now I'm not gonna feed this one yet. This one right here, I'm not gonna feed yet. I'm actually gonna feed, I'm actually gonna take Infusoria out and feed my baby fry. Um, so I'm not gonna feed it till after, otherwise I'll be feeding my baby fry a ton of, uh, ton of the, uh, the powder. And I would rather feed just straight these guys. 
And so that's something you want to think of. Whenever it is time to feed your infusoria, take some infusoria out, feed your fishes, and then put this in. Um, but let me go ahead and feed these first. So these are a few other containers. I was testing, do they need to be in warm water and be heated for them to grow? Or can they kind of grow outside of the tank where it's a little bit cooler and they still survive where it's a little bit cooler? Now, I don't know the exact temperature that they must be at, but in the garage, it doesn't get any lower than about 60. Um, in the tanks like here, it's gonna be you know 76 to 78 degrees. Um, and so I'm gonna feed these guys. And they've been surviving either way. And all you wanna do is do a few squirts just until you see like the majority of this water is dark green. And at the same time, you wanna get the water level up. Because as you take from here to feed your fish, well, not only are you taking infusoria, you're taking the water volume itself too. Um, and so this just replaces the food and the water volume. And if you get some in your side of your fish tank, I mean, it's, it's not a big deal, as long as you don't get a ton. And that's kind of it. All right, so all, all the little specks in here, the, these are all different types of infusoria. Um, and how you feed them is you kind of want to put your turkey baster on where they're located. So normally they're located on the walls of the glass or if um, some people use like broccoli or whatever, so they may be um, all attracted to that broccoli in the middle. And so there's a couple things you do. You can either stir it all up, or if you see them on the glass, I would say just suck them up directly from the glass like this, and you'll get just an absolute ton of them. Um, and then we're gonna feed it to our baby fry. Now, right here is our fry grow out system. Um, we have German black rams in this one. Um, we have clown killifish in this one here. And all I do is I squirt a little bit in there, and that's for our German black rams. Normally I do a, a couple squirts, and I'm gonna do the same for the clown killifish. Uh, a little bit for the clown killies, the little babies, a little bit more for the German black rams. I recommend feeding a, a good bit. That's, that's kind of what you want to feed, a good bit of this stuff. And now that we fed our fish, we can feed this culture. I'll go ahead and stir everything around too. Looking great. And guys, that's essentially how you culture infusoria, right? Now, all you have to do is you feed it every couple days, um, depending on how fast your infusoria culture grows. And I told you, an easy way to figure out when it's time to feed is when it's not dark, dark green. Whenever the water starts getting a paler green, go ahead and feed some more of your uh, spirulina powder, um, if that's even how you pronounce it. Guys, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, let me know in the comment section. Um, but that's, that's all you have to do is kind of get some tank water, mix it up uh, with the powder there, drop um, a few turkey basters full just to get it nice and dark and replenish the water. Um, and your infusoria is gonna be very, very happy. Now let's talk about what kind of fish will you feed with this uh, infusoria. So generally you wanna feed your baby fish infusoria um, during those first couple days of their life before they can eat baby brine shrimp. And so if you're trying to feed your fish baby brine shrimp, which I recommend you do, um, if they're not able to eat that, then go ahead and feed them infusoria. And so normally infusoria is good for different types of rams, different types of killifish, different types of fish that are normally small as an adult size, or the babies are even smaller. Like I have clown killies, clown killies are, are really tiny, adult, or like this big. And so the babies are even smaller. Um, and so it's great to have infusoria on hand for some of those smaller fish that you may have. Um, this will allow you to actually get some size on them, actually get to them to eat, and actually increase the survival rate of your baby fish um, so that you can just grow out a ton of fish and make them really, really fat and happy. Now, for those of you who stayed around this long, let me show you something else you can do with the infusoria culture. Um, so what I like to do as well is I like to take some of this spirulina powder culture with infusoria in it, the greenish looking water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna feed it to um, Moina. And so um, the other thing that will eat green water or spirulina powder or yeast 
um, anything that the infusoria is gonna feed on, these other organisms can feed on it too. And so let me show you what I'm talking about. So this tank is my shrimp tank, and I also put uh, little Moina eggs in there a few weeks ago, and oh look, look, I can already see them swimming around. So you may not be able to see that, but there's tons of them swimming around. And they also eat the same thing Infusoria eat. And so what I like to do, here's another little guy. Can, can you guys see that on camera? I don't think you can. I'm gonna have to get my macro lens and do some B-roll where you can see some of these little tiny little things. Now what Moina is, I, I believe they're part of the Daphnia family and they're actually smaller than Daphnia. And so this is another great food supply. Now I don't got a ton of them in here because I'm not feeding it as regularly as I should, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and dump some of that water in here. And I just got a couple turkey basters full, put it in the jar, and I'm just gonna dump it in here. And they're really gonna love that. And it's gonna cloud up your water for a little bit, but that's okay, it will settle back down especially as you have your filtration. Um, the Moina is gonna love that. The other types of Invasoria that's in here are gonna love that. And the shrimp are also gonna love that. And so it's just a win, win, win. And so if you keep a shrimp only tank, it may be helpful to keep some of these other cultures in with it. Um, now some things will prey on your shrimp, like maybe scuds. Scuds kinda are iffy. Um, but something small like Moina um, is going to be A-OK -okay to feed uh, or to kind of house with your shrimp. All right, guys, and that's how you culture Infusoria. It doesn't take that long. Doing the method that I did, on the second day, I saw little bitty Infusoria organisms crawling all throughout the jar. So it doesn't take very long. Um, and feeding is really easy once you have the ingredients. If you get that bulk supply of spirulina powder, um, it will last you for months, maybe even longer. Um, and you can even be creative and use some type of blanched vegetables if you want, or you can use the yeast um, formula if you want as well. Uh, but in my opinion, the spirulina powder works just great, um, and all of my infusoria cultures are really thriving. I hope you liked this video, hope you learned something. Um, and if you wanna become a better fish keeper in 10 minutes per week, uh, go ahead and sign up to my free newsletter located in the description below. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks guys.